um, came to me after an event organizer saw my one-woman show at a small black box theater in downtown Albuquerque. The show, which I scripted and produced and performed, is called Corey Remembers. Based on the life and legacy of the late Corrie ten Boom, who was a Dutch Christian woman who rescued Jewish people during the Holocaust. To tell my story, I have to back up 20 years. When I was, um, I had already become a believer at that time. And I use the word believer because um, the word Christian seems to have lost its original meaning. In fact, in some ways, it's taken on a negative connotation. And uh, for instance, I was baptized as a child, and, and, but I wasn't following the teachings of Jesus. I was Christianized, not really following Jesus. But then everything changed when I became a true believer. Everything changed. And the Bible became so fascinating. I loved it. Uh, along with all the other things, go changes going on in my life, besides reading the Bible and going to church and meeting all these new people, I become, became intent on learning about the Jews. Now, um, uh, not just the Jews of the Bible, the Israelites, no, the Jews of today. I guess anyone who gets interested in the Bible is going to get interested in the Jews. I mean, it is a book about the Jews, the Jews, the Jews, uh, all the prophets, uh, the disciples. Hey, Jesus was Jewish. So I wanted to know about Jews. Now, I had some Jewish friends and acquaintances, but they weren't really warming to my conversation about my newfound faith. And they cer certainly weren't taking to the idea that Jesus was their long-awaited Messiah. Um, my friends, my Jewish friends, weren't looking for the Messiah. And I learned pretty quickly that, let me stop right here. If there's a Jew who accidentally happened in here tonight, let me assure you, I've never led one Jewish person to my faith. I've never converted anybody not for lack of trying. I've just been a dismal failure. And back when I was trying so hard, I couldn't understand. Did I have my four spiritual laws out of order? Did I, my walk not match my talk? I finally got to the point, I mean, Jews are smart. Couldn't they see he was their Messiah? It was so crystal clear to me. For the Jew first, then the Gentile. They weren't buying it. And I said, Lord, I started having a crisis of faith, what Blackaby would call a crisis of faith. And I thought, hmm, Jews are smart. If they don't see this, I must be, um, I must, maybe I have it wrong. Oh, my. I got it in my head that if I could see just one Jew come to know Christ, I would know for sure I was on the right track. And I began to pray, Lord, could I see just one Jew come to know you? Now, I need to see just one, and then I'll know for sure that I've got this spiritual thing lined up right. I prayed this all the time. And one day, I heard an answer. I heard, not audibly, but quotably, Oh, so you just love Jews to get them saved. No, Lord, you know, you gave me the love for Jewish people. And here's where my first aha moment comes. He said, that's right. You love, I'll save. You love, I'll save. Four words that liberated me, that, that released me to just love the Jewish people, which was so easy. Um, my husband and I, we even made a donation to a Jewish organization to remind me to never forget, I don't have to agonize about Jewish souls. All I have to do is love. In time, we started an organization that we called Yad Bayad. Now, that's Hebrew for hand in hand. And it was aimed to bring Christians and Jews together so that we could get to know each other without trying to proselytize each other and, and just uh, learn the things we have in common, learn about the Jewish history, the faith, the land of Israel.
doing this, and this was in the 1990s, was kind of a risky thing to do. It's very novel back then, trying to bring evangelical Christians together with Jews. I mean, let's face it, we sit on opposite sides of the table on many very controversial issues. So finding the right speaker for our, our um, programs, for our meetings, became crucial and challenging. For one meeting, though, we had this wonderful actress in town, and she portrayed the late Golda Meir. Now, it was wonderful. Everyone had a great time. Her performance was educational, you know, historical, and I got the idea that if I could convince that actress to portray Corey Ten Boom, we could have another great meeting. And so I collected all the books I could find about Corey Ten Boom and took this woman to lunch and laid out my plan for her life. <laughs> she was a wonderful listener, and she, she, I thought I had her. I mean, she was so engaged in our conversation, and I was going, ka-ching, ka-ching, she's going to do it. And she said, yes, this woman's story must be portrayed. But, my dear, I'm Jewish. A Jew could never play this role. This role demands a Christian who loves the Jewish people. She said, honey, this is your role. I said, oh, pff, I could never play Cory Tim Boom. I have no acting background. I have no public speaking background. I mean, I listed all the reasons why not, and she just waved them all away. She said, I'll teach you to act. No. She, then she tapped my chest. She said, I can teach you to act, honey, but a Jewish heart... That's God-given, and you have it. I left the meeting pretty crestfallen. And on my way home, I'm driving, I'm saying, oh, pff, me play Corey Ten Boom. And again, reviewed the whole list of reasons I could never do this. And at the end of it, I said, and I'm too tall. Now, I didn't know how tall Corey Ten Boom was, but her picture looked so much like my grandmother, and my grandmother's short, so she had to be short. So I go in the house with all the books that I had planned for the actress to take, lay them down on the table, make another lunch. I do that when overeat when I'm down. I open a book. It jumped off the play page at me. Corey Tim Boom was 5'7". I'm 5'7". <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> so I kept reading. The next thing I read was that Corey Tim Boom his primary ministry prior to World War II had been with mentally handicapped children. My only biological child is mentally handicapped. He has Down syndrome. And I got that thump in my heart, and I looked up toward the ceiling, and I said, Lord, I'll try. It took a year to write the script, to affect a Dutch accent, get over my stage fright. But after that year, when I started doing Corey, I've been doing it now for 12 years, and I've gone into schools and churches and synagogues and co Jewish community centers and the Holocaust Museum and, and Jerusalem and, and Washington, and God has taken me all over the world with Miss Tim Boom's memory. I'm going to show you... Um, a clip from the show and just remind you that our testimonies can outlive us. Corey Ten Boom. A shadow fell across us in 1940. I was almost 50 years old and this shadow rested lightly. No one dreamed that this tiny cloud would grow until it blocked out the sky, and no one dreamed that in its darkness, each of us would be called to play a role. My father was very different, and he served as our example, was a great help to many people who were struggling with these times which were changing so quickly. He had a long experience with the Lord, and his thrust was so great, he never changed. Although physically, yes, he was a weak old man, old as me now, but spiritually, his strength intensified, and he became our unwavering source of courage. His perspective on truth never changed, he said, because this book does not change. 
I remember one day the Nazis were rounding up the Jewish people right there at the Hotmart, the town square, and they just pushing them on a large truck. I was nearly numb to witness this. And I, I, I whispered to my father and I said, oh, those poor people. Of course, I was talking of the innocent Jews, but my father responded, yes, those poor people. People, I pity the Nazis. They have dared to touch the apple of God's eye. You see, my father, he never changed. There's a powerful anointing on the memory of Corrie Ten Boom. She didn't have children, but those of us Christians who love the Jewish people and the state of Israel Perhaps we are her spiritual heirs. And times are serious all over the world. But the Ten Boom story, it gives us, it, it provides us a hope and reconciliation for everyone who hears it. And in her story, there's the power to bring Christians and Jews together for the times that we face in the future, that we can come together hand in hand, Christian and Jew. And that's what this was all about, and my love for Jesus Christ. Thank you.